Yo guys, what's up? Finally doing the swatches of all those markers I bought before. Yeah, so this is a Copic hand color chart that I printed on 11 by 17 um, Brist Bristol board, Strathmore Bristol board of just the yellow one, the yellow packaging. <laughs> um, yeah, printed it at work. It's laser printed, so it'll not be affected by the alcohol ink. So, um, so yeah, so doing a voiceover because one, I, something happened to the audio and conversion. And also I needed to speed up this, this video cause it was like 40 minutes by the end of it. And, uh, I don't think that's cool, man. Yeah. I don't think that's cool to have a 40 minute video on swatching. Um, because you know, you guys have other videos to watch that aren't mine and I appreciate that anyways. So yeah, so swatching all the markers that I have, which include the ones that I bought and kind of like, I don't regret them, but it was a crazy purchase um, in the last video. But I thought I'd start by kind of like talking about how I got into the Copic marker system. And I don't know if it's, this is how it is for everybody else, but this is how, this is what happened to me. <laughs> this is, what had happened was... Um, so yeah, so my first experience, I guess, my first exposure to Copic markers was, uh, way back in the day when I was in high school and I was like, uh, super nerd kid, wish I was still that nerdy cause that's cool now again. Um, and I watched a lot of, um, anime and I would tag along with my brother to anime conventions <laughs> and, um, you know what? No shame in my game. I went to anime conventions. I don't anymore, but mostly because they're too expensive and uh, too mainstream now. Yeah, this hipster over here. Uh, yeah, so they had Copic markers at the conventions, like, um, and they were like crazy expensive. And this is when I was in high school, so they were like, they didn't have, they weren't imported here. It's like somebody went there, bought them, and brought them back expressly to resell them and make a profit because they deserve it. That's that's kind of a hard thing. And um, also at the time they only had the uh, classic shape. So you know like Kobe, Kobe markers have four shapes. They have the classic which is like a square. They have the sketch which is like an oval-ish. They have the wide, which is a big oval, and then they have the chow, which is a circle. And uh, in terms of their the, the 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 shape of the barrel, so yeah, they only have that 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 then, and um, you know, I I couldn't buy them. But fast forward, I mean, you know, but I wanted them, right? And you know, they kind of like stayed in my mind. So fast forward to when I was in uh, taking graphic graphic design classes and I needed um, markers in different shades of gray to do uh, comps and thumbnails quickly and um, I had the Tombow markers but they um, I don't know I, I feel like they kind of like dried up too quickly or maybe I abused them <laughs> um, but uh, they also had come out with the sketch the Copic sketch by then and uh, at the art store that was near the school I I found them there and I bought the gray ones which I'll show you at the at the end of because it's at the end of the color chart um uh I bought the gray ones so and those were um like like I was like fine I'm gonna pay twice as much for one marker because the Tomo markers at the time were like three something 389 or something like that per marker and the Copic markers were like I don't know 699 so I was like all right fine I'm gonna pay, pay twice as much and get the refills when I need them and um I didn't need the refills as quickly as I thought I was going to I needed them eventually because this was like over like two years of classes um so yeah so and, you know, like, I was like, and, you know, I was also in the mindset of, um, oh, by the way, this is like lipstick red. This is a, this is a great red. Um, <laughs> uh, I was in the mindset of like, I'm going to make this my career. So I'm going to invest B 
because, you know, Copic markers are an investment. You are investing <laughs> when you decide you want them. Like, they will return, <laughs> you know, value for you more than one way. So, um, yeah, so I invested in them. And this was also at the time when I think Michaels started to carry them. So they were, they had like U.S. distributors, I think, by then. I don't know. I don't know the exact history, but I think they did. I mean, clearly they did, but they had it at my independent art store. But they also had them at Michael's big box art store. And um, at the time, they also had, I don't know, like, how early that was. I want to say it was, like, the first couple months. And there was, like, an insane, like, 40% off coupon off of all the markers that you bought. So that day, like, I was like, is this going to work on the Copics? And the girl checked, and they did. So that day, I threw down 200 bucks on my first, like, I don't know, like, 50 or 50. 60 Copic markers yeah I mean that was at the time I did have a job and the graphic design classes were kind of like night class kind of thing um so I had like some kind of job it wasn't it didn't pay that great but it was enough that like I could throw down two hundred dollars <laughs> in markers like I said investment right um so yeah so like that's that's kind of how all that happened. Oh, and these two colors are uh, two oranges that are super similar. Cadmium orange and chrome. I'm sorry, Chinese orange. Very similar. I don't really see a difference here. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a slight, a very slight difference. Maybe I need to like go over them again, like twice. But anyways, uh. Oh man, I totally lost my train of thought. Going going to school, was it? No, okay, now I have 123 Copic markers. 123. That's like a third almost of like what what 358. Yeah, something like that. And I mean I think I'm at a good number now, and I don't know if I need any more. It's nice to have more, but I don't think I need any more. Um maybe once I start like doing some serious color drafts of some work I've been doing then maybe I'll need more but um yeah 126 markers and that was also another Michael's haul um in a sense because they had my markers for they had a 25% off of all art supply materials so which included the Copic markers so that was nice and then there was a 20% off of everything coupon so it was roughly 40-ish percent off so I, di I didn't pay I don't think I paid full price ever for a Copic marker um and I mean like even even at the uh, little art store those might have been like closer to full price but I think I bought them during the back to school like sale so they weren't they were on sale and then I had a discount for being a student so yeah that is how I acquired the rest of those markers and it was, it was quite an acquisition. It wasn't an investment. <laughs> yeah, so, swatching more of these yellow ones. Sorry, I had to take a water break there. Um, this color, so I went off on a tangent on this color. This color is called Lionette Yellow, or <laughs> Lionette Gold. And um, in the original track, I got really like, and I had to like look this up so I could get the details right this time around. I said, stay gold, pony boy. And that is a quote from a book called The Outsiders. And if you haven't read that book because you're not in America and you didn't go through eighth grade <laughs> in America, that uh, that's when you read that book. Um and spoiler alert, sorry about this, I'm going to spoil it for you. Um, it's about uh, uh, this gang of young boys. It's like it's like greasers and the so socias. So that's kind of like um, like that movie Grease with John Travolta, right? So these like, you know, then they're two rival gangs and Ponyboy is a greaser. 
and in his gang he makes friends with um this other boy named johnny something bad happens and those two have to go into hiding uh, <laughs> I don't want to tell you about that. I'll leave you some mystery. So they have to go into hiding and they end up in, uh, in, I think it's an old church and, you know, pony boy is a little bit different. He's a softer soul. He's a, he's a gentler soul and he likes reading and he, you know, <laughs> he loves nature. He's that kind of guy. Not really meant to be a gangster, right? Not really into instilling fear and like being violent but that's the world of gangs um so yeah so they're at their hideout and it i think it's sun uh sunrise and you know the co the color of the sky turns gold and he uh starts reciting the poem nothing gold can stay by robert frost which i uh, i looked up and it goes nature's first screen is gold her hardest hue to hold her early leaves a flower but only so an hour then leaf subsides to leaf so eden sank to grief so dawn goes down today nothing gold can stay right and it's like it's it, you know it's 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 poetic because it's a poem but he recites this poem and like, you know, then, then you as a reader are like, you know, he's not meant for this world of like gang world. Um, later on though, something other else happens and Johnny is essentially dying. And he says to Pony Boy, stay gold, Pony Boy. Right? That's like really great writing. I think the, uh, her, her name is Hines. The author of this book is a woman. Um anyway so yeah so i mean that just kind of goes to show like you know the effect the effect of art and colors on on a person fictional or not um yeah really 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 deep ish but yeah anyways <laughs> all that to say i really like colors and uh i guess collecting collecting markers is part of that <laughs> so yeah let me take a drink of water here. Oh. Right, so I had to change the battery out there. And now we're getting into the blue-greens. I think these are some of my favorite colors in general. It's like I really like these like turquoises and like aqua colors. Um, What am I talking about here? Mint green. Um, just like reading out the names of the colors. Mint green, something like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mint green and aqua. Yeah, so I think here is where I bought into um I bought a lot of colors that were in the same blending group so that I could kind of like see what see how that really works there are other videos on the internet that um explain better how they work but if they're if they have that like number the same like all the ones in that bg like 10 11 13 15 18 like they're all in the same kind of like color family and they're supposed to like blend seamlessly from one to the other and i did it again here with like these two markers um yeah i just wanted to see how that was going to be But, um, yeah, some of these are, like, really nice, like, inky colors. Like, if I had uh, colored any of these, like, mermaid drawings that I did. Like, well, first they're pencil drawings, so they're not going to work with the markers. And I've been too forgetful to bring my sketchbook to work so I could photocopy them and then color the photocopies. <laughs> I know that's terrible of me, but I think the drawings look really um, interesting on their own. But yeah.
um and uh this color here is b29 ultramarine um uh, which um which reminds me of the pigment color and you know i bet they did this on purpose the pigment color for for ultramarine is pb29 so maybe that's why this marker is called b29 um but yeah yeah the color uh, i watched this like thing on the bbc about the the history the art history of the color blue and how is it's like uh really difficult to at the time to uh produce a blue pigment because it came it comes out from a mineral called lapis uh lazuli maybe lazuli i'm not quite sure how to pronounce it but it comes from that mineral and you have to do back in the day you had to do lots of uh, refining to get the blue pigment out of the rock you, you like you had to grind it up really fine um, put put it in like gum arabic and beeswax and then in lye and then somehow the blue color would precipitate out of this like crazy like r waxy rod thing um the video is kind of really interesting so if you just search on the internet on the youtube you will see the video of how it is made um oh yes okay so now i'm in the uh, earth colors also known as the skin tone colors which is uh kind of funny um i think i get into it in a minute after this one i do like that color that brown color um milky milk milk chocolate i think it's called anyways so some of the other colors um had like not so pc names this color right here is called uh, Oriental, at least in the marker that I have. Uh, e E34. Oh, I'm on E33 right now. E34. And um, yeah, it's called now. It's called Toast, but when I bought it, it was called Oriental, and I th and I really think it was just a kind of a a lost in translation things because remember these markers came from Japan and. I, maybe their worldview at the time was not that great, at least in terms of um, naming naming markers after skin colors. Yeah, like E00 is called Skin White. Right now it is called Cotton Pearl, but not my marker. I mean, I don't know. I do think it's kind of dope that I have the, the OG names, <laughs> the OG translations, as like, kind of like for me to be like, oh yeah, I I, again, invested in this system a while ago, but... I am glad that they decided to be um, more PC and more inclusive about the colors of the of skin colors. So yeah, just some thoughts on that. Yeah, and some of these colors are, like, super light. Mm, I think, you know, when you buy them on the internet and you don't swatch them out beforehand, like, you just don't know if you actually needed that color. Like, I was thinking these were going to be really good skin tone colors. Um, and then to, like, layer up also. I think they will layer up. But, you know. I mean, I guess I... You can't really think of it like watercolor per se, because it's just the color that comes out. All right, so here we are, and we are doing all of the neutrals. So they have like, what is that, four different neutrals? I only have the grays. I'm sorry, the <laughs> I don't have the toner color one. Um, I, of course, I have the cool grays, the neutral grays, and the warm grays. And um, I don't think that you need every single one. I think you can skip like uh, how I did. And um, yeah. Oh, and the, the sevens I bought later on. 
So like the one, three, and five. I had I had one, three, five, and black. Mostly because that's what that's all they had at the art store. I think if they had the seven, I would have bought it. At the time. Yeah. Really good colors. I think I could have done with just the neutrals, but I liked the way the warm gray ones looked. And I was like being uh, a completionist. <laughs> oh man. Oh, okay. I overfilled that marker. That was my bad. <laughs> but when it's that juicy, like, it's pretty dope. <laughs> Yeah, that looks more like a brown than a, than a, than a gray, so. All right, and so we have black 100, and then um, the 110, which is special black, and I don't remember what the difference was. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's like black and rich black. Like one of them is rich black and one of them is regular. <laughs> And last but not least, Colorless Blender, which of course doesn't look like anything, but um, yeah, that solution seems to have many uses according to other people on YouTube. Um, I think I've only used it to to push a color back or, you know, to, to blend colors that don't really want, have, um, come in the same uh, blending group. So yeah. Well, Let's do close up. So yeah, that's all of my 123 markers. And yeah, I mean, I think I got a good set. I'm not interested in the fluorescent ones, but yeah. So that's the end. Like and subscribe, but only if you really want to. So yeah, peace out. <laughs>